back to Secret Weapons, and today we're taking a look at The Bard by Electronic Audio Experiments. Look, if we know one thing about electronic audio experiments is that they know how to make a really great preamp pedal. Whether it's the Model Fet, the Citadel, or the recent collaboration with Science Amplification, uh, electronic audio experiments just doesn't really miss when it comes to taking what is great about a specific amplifier and distilling that preamp section down to a solid state pedal format. And one of the things that I really appreciate is a focus on more niche and less commonly seen amp preamp designs. And to that end, today we are looking at the Bard, which is a Music Man HD 130 distilled down into a pedal format. And this thing is really interesting. You have two channels in it. You have the bright channel and the normal channel. You have a two band EQ for lows and highs, and then your level and your drive. And this is really interesting because the HD 130 is not a particularly high gain amplifier. And I think a lot of times when we look at preamp pedals, we look at them for that kind of higher gain side of things, something that will break up a lot. This is interesting because the majority of that kind of drive range isn't particularly high gain. You will get more teeth more quickly out of the bright channel on this thing, but it really is a tone shaper. It is a sweetener and it has some very, very strong EQ options here. The low and the high controls on this thing you can cut them all the way down to minimum. And for some reason, they still sound amazing. And in some applications, they actually sound better. When we get to the sound samples, you'll hear a little bit of what I'm talking about. But I've been noticing in my testing and in the uh, intro song that you just heard, uh, a lot of the clean tones in this is what I'm really gravitating towards. This and a compressor kind of combine to create some really wonderful shaping potential for the amp that comes after it. But like I said, that isn't to say that this thing can't get hairy. When you dime that drive control, this thing does get pretty intense and pretty overdriven, especially if you put any kind of like boost or what we use again on that intro track, the Universal Audio Max pedal, uh, basically running a 610A style preamp and a compressor ahead of this thing just to kind of make it blow up a little bit more. There are, of course, a lot of great ways to use this thing ahead of an amplifier or into a cab sim all on its own. Uh, lower drive settings on this thing while pushing more level through will offer up a different kind of breakup and a little bit more clarity when using this thing to push the front of a different amplifier. Uh, but likewise, we will go into our sound samples and at the very end of the video, we will run this directly into the Universal Audio Aux Stomp for cabinets and you'll hear that this thing actually has some really great potential as part of an amp replacement directory. Also, and just on a purely cosmetic level, I really love the look of this. I love the kind of like artistic nod to the amp it's based on. And also, I'm not sure if you can see it in this angle, so I'll pull in for a tighter shot right here. But that hammered finish looks really, really nice. It's a small format, it's easy to navigate, it's easy to use, it looks great, and most importantly, it sounds damn good. So let's get to our sound samples and let's give the bard a listen. As always, before we get into our sound samples, let's go ahead and talk through our signal chain and the context we are working in. I am playing my Jennings Voyager with McNelly Chaplin humbuckers into the Universal Audio Max compressor and preamp, the Bard by Electronic Audio Experiments, and into our amplifier, which is the Universal Audio Dream 65 reverb amp. From there, we go to the Strymon Timeline and Big Sky, and then out to our DAW, which is Universal Audio's Luna. We are kind of setting level with the Neve 1073 preamp, and we are mastering with ATR tape and the SSL bus compressor. This is what our dry tone sounds like. <laughs> Okay, let's go to the normal mode, knobs at noon, and let's give the bard a listen. Let's start by taking a look at uh, that gain range, because as you can hear, all knobs at noon, this thing's pretty subtle. 
uh, I think a lot of the value here is going to be the um, the high and low controls in terms of kind of like fine tuning the amp you're running into in this context. But uh, let's start by taking a look at kind of like how much we can get this thing to break up outside of just using the volume itself. There's some great clarity south of noon on that drive control, and uh, and it's nice to kind of like get your break up by hitting your amp a little bit harder and just using the kind of gain and EQ controls for more of tone shaping and then getting your break up by just kind of like increasing volume. So let's give that a listen. <laughs> Okay, let's reset our volume and gain to noon, and let's give those high and low controls a listen.
I actually really like the kind of subtlety that that completely taken out low sound is uh, on a neck humbucker like this. Uh, I have a feeling that it'll actually sound really cool with some wet effects. Yeah, that's rad. There's a uh, there's a really cool bit of definition that comes into your palm muting uh, with that low control really kind of cranked backwards. Following in that same route, you also have a high control, which can create a lot of really great warmth or a little bit more teeth and bite and clarity, depending on which direction you go. That's pretty obvious with a high control, but this pedal does it exceptionally well. Let's go back to that big washy sound.
why does this sound so good? Why does having high and low cut so well in this pedal? take a look at that bright channel we've been doing everything in normal and getting a good amount of treble and teeth where we want it and a great amount of clarity where we want it as well so let's jump into that bright mode and see kind of what that does for us in terms of clipping and those eq controls <laughs>
So now that we've taken a look at the Bard as a kind of drive and or boost slash preamp pedal, let's go ahead and take a look at it as a standalone preamp solution with something like the Aux Stomp, which is just going to offer us cabinets uh, with the Bard acting as our amplifier. Uh, the board is otherwise still the same. We've got the Universal Audio Max ahead of it, which we'll use. Uh, as kind of an additional gain stage to see how this thing kind of breaks up with some boosting put in front of it. But we are using the aux as a um, Greenback 25 1x12 speaker cabinet with a 57 and a 421. <laughs> Put that max in front of it and give it a little bit more, a little, just a hair more push. Mm -hmm. 